Chapter 6 A well-dressed man arrived two hours later. Banat's short black hair framed his kind eyes. His square face was indistinguishable from his thick neck, and his clothes had neither stench nor stain. A deep intensity belied his gentle smile. Sa, lady, I am Banat, he said to Vittoria with a slight bow. Vittoria. She bowed her head with a smile. Thank you for coming. It's good to meet you, Banat. Mer sat next to Pear on his mattress, and Aniko watched Binat from the other side of the room, clutching a few wooden blocks Mateo had sent with a magical spell. Concern marred Aniko's features beneath the hints of soft sugar along the edge of his lips. Hidden within the toys had been several delicious treats. Aniko had never had such a sugary treat before. He'd gobbled them so quickly his stomach hurt. Apprehension filled Vittoria's core as Binat stepped toward her. I'm here to bring you to Mateo's. The fear of this first step could overwhelm her if she let it. She'd never been away from her family for more than a day, but she wouldn't allow it to overpower her because she'd chosen. Still, it eroded her courage, tugged at her to stay, to put away this madness and remain in the safety of her family. Are you ready? Yes. She swallowed hard and felt more courage for the agreement. Yes, I'm ready. I have nothing to bring with me. Mateo will provide everything. Zuri is already preparing the house for you. You've never transported before? No, I have never transported. I will transport you. She grimaced. Pear used to do small spells when she was a little girl, but hadn't worked any magic since Hode had trained guardians to seek out magic users among the workers, then put the lawbreakers' heads on pikes in the street. The severed heads dripped blood and brains for weeks before the ravens ate their eyes, hair, and skin. Old skulls still rattled in the farthest reaches of the East End coven. Magic made her apprehensive. Is there any other way? My men are outside watching. They'll come in as soon as we leave and take your family to safety. Aniko darted up to her side and pressed his shoulder into her leg. She wrapped her arm around him, holding him firmly. When will I see them again? He shot a quick wink at Aniko. Tomorrow, if you wish. Her shoulders relaxed. So soon? Of course. Mateo had been nothing if not kind. Thank you. That helps. It's almost impossible that anyone would know about you or this plan, but we won't take any risks, I assure you. We? Who else is there? He smiled. I'm Mateo's guardian, for lack of a better word. I have a team of ten men who help me and Mateo in his work as La Salvatora. My men and I keep Mateo and La Salvatora safe. Now, we'll keep you safe. That's a relief, Mare muttered. You are loyal to him? Pear asked, but not nodded to them. He is like a son to me. I have no family but him and my men. I'd give my life for all of them, for your daughter as well. Pear nodded once. When he looked at Vittoria, his soul showed in his teary eyes. Tears clouded hers in response. Banat held out a hand. I can transport both of us, but I'll need to have a hold of your arm to do it. You can expect darkness and pressure. Count or do something in the back of your mind. It helps. Transportation is not painful, but it is rather uncomfortable. Vittoria nodded. Just one moment. Of course. Vittoria hurried to pair. She lay her head in his lap, eyes squeezed shut. Aniko ran over with a cry and snuggled into her side. With a little peep of emotion, Mare clutched all of them in a massive embrace. Pear stroked Vittoria's hair. Pear? Yes, Mazuna? Have I made a terrible mistake? No, you have accepted your destiny from the givers like a brave soul. You will change the world. Vittoria pulled away, tears hot in her eyes. I am so proud of you. He pressed a shaky hand to her cheek. Your courage is remarkable. La Emanuela will give you the strength you need to see this through. She clutched Aniko to her. He didn't cry, but he held her so tight her ribs hurt. Tori, you're leaving us? Her reply choked her. Please. Mare grabbed Vittoria's hand and one of Pear's. Let us plead to Alkivers on your behalf today. Mare's voice dropped into a quiet, steady intonation as she whispered a blessing, invoking it on Vittoria's head on behalf of all the givers. Vittoria closed her eyes and listened, heart in her throat. When Mare finished, she pressed a kiss to Vittoria's hand. You can do this, Mazuna. 
Tears collected in Mare's eyes. We love you. Vittoria squeezed her fingers as Aniko let out a little cry. Tori, don't go. I love you. Hearing the emotion in his voice was too much, she hugged him, pressed a kiss to his hair, and whispered, I love you. I will see you tomorrow. He tried to cling to her when she stood and turned to Banat, but Mare peeled him away. Please, transport me away now while I still can. Banat grabbed her arm and sought her silent permission with a questioning gaze. When she gave it with a nod, something cool trickled through her body, then whisked her into a thick darkness and away from Aniko's terrified howls.